So let's welcome Mr. Eric Graf, who is from Best Global, along with Ms. Maria Anhild. She's a CEO at Electrobit Automotive, who would uh, discuss the evolution of security challenges in V2X and its impact. Over to you, Eric and Maria. Thank you very much. So, hello, Maria. Great to have you here today. And uh, I'm excited to have a conversation with you on the evolution of security challenges in a vehicle to everything world and what is the impact on particularly on the cybersecurity uh, of this new paradigm in automotive. So while software is becoming increasingly important in the car and getting an additional boost through the introduction or the stronger introduction of battery electric vehicles, um, one could even say software is becoming the differentiator for OEMs. Now, in the past, OEMs had taken a lot of differentiation through introduction of security uh, features like uh, ABS or, or earlier the security belt or then airbags and so on. So now the question uh, is how could they keep the same level of reliability and, and, and security on the cyber side of the car? And uh, this is what, what I would like to discuss with you today, Maria. Yeah, nice to meet you, Eric. Great to be here and thank you. You're absolutely right. If you look at the entire automotive industry in terms of trends and what's happening there, like two big things that are uh, disrupting the e-mobility and the move from combustion engines to uh, electromobility. And the second one is software, where the experts, as you mentioned, are uh, more or less agreeable that this is the growth factor in terms of technology, reducing the complexity, but also opening up new value streams for the OEMs and car makers. So it's not just the technology, it's also going into new business models and new value streams, what makes it so interesting uh, for, for the industry. Now, as you rightfully uh, said, if we look at the automotive uh, industry for decades, the most viable principle has been the principle of dependability, safety, yeah? You wanna be reliable in the car, in the vehicle. And you mentioned the airbag, the, 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 the belt and everything. Now, if you see what is happening with vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, vehicle-to-backhand, vehicle-to-the-cloud, and the en entire ecosystem that we are facing uh, with the car being like a, an edge device, an internet of things device, and all the complexity, then we can agree that in addition to the safety, the topic of security becomes an additional vector that we need to look into and secure in terms of make sure that we design appropriately, we execute appropriately, as we're now talking about the integrity of the vehicle, about the safety of the person in the car, the people in the car, as for the physical safety, as with if, if, if a vehicle gets hijacked. Yeah, I mean, remember all these, let's remember, but if you look at all these movies from Hollywood, like uh, Fast and Furious, an Italian job. And unfortunately, all this is not a fiction these days. These things happen. And the task of the automotive industry is to make sure that these things stay in the movie theaters and do not uh, continue to happen in reality. So yeah, it is a big challenge and the industry is moving in addressing those, not by prohibiting these, but doing it in addition to the safety and making sure that the security is the second vector of technology evolution. Thank you very much for that. Now, you, you mentioned it's not just a technical topic uh, to create the uh, security and safety, but there is as well a business case behind it. So I would, I would appreciate if you can give us a few ideas or, or thoughts on, on what is the business case or could be a tip, uh, potential business case behind the software in the car and the security layer to it? Uh, well, the trends that make the, uh, the expansion of the vehicle to vehicle to X, as, as people say it in the, in the science or the vehicle to X cybersecurity market, 
are, of course, the technology, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to the infrastructure, on the streets, with the traffic system, vehicle to the clouds, etc. But then there is a business need from the applications or a user experience that is coming. Now think of driver system systems. Yeah? yeah, they they need this connectivity, the traffic system, and if these are like more handy to your mind, think about services like fleet management. They require, they demand the connectivity. And if you look like regions across the world and connectivity around this, then you'll get into the ecosystem, ecosystem problematic. With vehicles becoming a value stream for OEMs, not just by the time when the car hits the road, yeah, a car is being sold, but the vehicle of being like over the lifetime with all the software and updates over the entire lifetime of a car, of a vehicle, then we need to protect and make sure that the software continuously gets updated, that there's nothing vulnerable, that all these things are being detected and automatically um, 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 like uh, corrected and protected and this enables the value streams but it creates also the demands on the technology and the car makers to make sure that happens in a reliable reliable uh, uh, way yeah okay now uh, if i look at the at the concepts right used to to secure the car some of them still remi uh, remind me of the Middle Ages, right? When people try to protect castles with ever higher walls and moats. Um, is there a fresh approach you and Electrobit takes in, in this uh, securing the, the, the car from a cybersecurity perspective? Well, there is, like with anything in the world, uh, protecting by uh, putting a, a wall or pretending that the challenge does not exist is not a, a very efficient way. So it, it's rather um, em embrace the opportunity in the market that there is a demand for these use cases and demand for that business that we need to solve and make sure that as with the safety that you mentioned, that we make sure that everything else is also secure and reliable. And we continuously uh, expand our portfolio and make sure that everything that we offer in our solution portfolio is secure, well tested, and well well architected. Um, and it's um, probably most of people know that uh, the company acquired the startup with Argus. We have a startup based in Israel with uh, in in Tel Aviv, one of the most uh, amazing technologies and patents that are out there in the industry. And we make sure that. Not only we are implementing everything that we know in our company in the way how we develop our system, the development cycles, in the way how we produce our, um, our software, uh, but also our portfolio includes the latest technologies for communication, authenticated identification, theft protection, uh, all types of crypto cryptographic calculations, secure diagnostics. And then we're also expanding the portfolio to offer products. So for our customers to make sure we help them address the challenge, for example, for OEMs, car manufacturers that want to enable a remote software updates yeah, from the vehicle to the back end, we, we offer a dedicated product, Electrobit Cadian Sync, that allows them to secure, download and install all these uh, over the air updates. And unlike other vendors, we are already supporting the adaptive AutoSAR uh, standards uh, that make sure that for the next generation of software enabled vehicles and high performance computers, we are already having a solution for, for people to take. Or Argus just recently launched a product that enables car, car manufacturers to detect and to respond to vulnerabilities that they um, handle and, and, and um, have to handle throughout the entire vehicle life cycle, which is something new on the market. Then yeah. we offer a security operation center, we offer consultancy services for people, which is a unique uh, proposition on the market that we offer products, portfolio, but also services for our customers. 
Yeah, so so you said life cycle. I think I would like to, to elaborate a little bit on that because what 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 we understand is that the I mean, if you talk uh, mobile phones, right? Many people say, well, the car is the new iPhone, but there yeah. is a few significant differences between the mobile phone and the car, right? There's only yes. terms of, of investment, level of investment you do, and and then expectation on life cycle. I mean, today still we need we accept uh, like 15 years, 10 plus years life cycle for the car and. And I think it's an industry understanding that this will not go below, below 10 years very fast. So, so how do you, or where do you see the challenges and how do you address the challenge if you have a 10 years life cycle and an accelerating rate of change? So new things coming in faster um, into the technology stack. So how do you, how do you manage that? Well, they have very, uh, I mean, this, uh, the, the a modern car is, is a smartphone on wheels. This is probably one of the most uh, used analogies in the, in the, <laughs> in the press. And for some, there are many reasons why that is true. Just yeah. if you look at from connectivity, the expectation on user experience, um, given the, the time that we spent in the car, and our uh, experience expectation that we connect everything uh, like we used in a, in a living room or with uh, autonomous driving that this is our new workspace or living room and everything there are many analogies yeah we're talking about operating system in the uh, in the in a smartphone and all the applications connecting to them in app store we're talking about operating system in the vehicle in the car and all the functions and the services that are sitting on top of this they're very nice analogies Something that the auto industry is learning from the high tech industry is the concept of uh, modularization, the concept of software development kits, uh, decouple the platform development with the applications development and how to make sure things happen in parallel for speed, for user experience, for, um, for uh, encapsulations. So that is all true. What is different? There are like four, four elements that are different performance, storage capacity, especially if you do autonomous driving, you'll probably don't have a trunk if you look at the <laughs> requirements for artificial intelligence today, uh, data processing and scale, and not to forget the safety. So this is very different between a smartphone and, and a modern vehicle today. Okay, very, very, very different. Now, if you look at the safety side, that if um, if a smartphone becomes um, um, not reachable uh, for, for a moment, it's annoying. If a vehicle is not reachable, if something happens, it could be human human life. And as I said, it is the safety plus the security element because we talk about the vehicle's integrity. We're talking about data privacy, and we're talking about especially in the autonomous driving that you can hijack a vehicle, you know, where things need to be taken under serious design and control and protection. So yes, we can learn a lot about from the high tech about speed of development, development, agile technologies, decoupling, service yeah, platform, etc. But there are things for security where the high tech has not cracked it yet, like there are specific automotive protocols that need to be considered that uh, protection for that does not exist today, or the mil millions of access points that the modern car, car industry has today that is not available on the smartphone. Yeah, so these are things that are yet to be handled in the industry. And if you look at the supply chain in the automotive, we have one of the most complex supply chains in the in the in the in the world if not the most complex one way have high tech and the classic automotive providers where we need to unite and make sure that all that works together if that answers the question that you that you yeah <laughs> i think it certainly does so thank you very much for that now you, you said this this very very complex supply chain now this complex supply chain means that there is a high number today in many cars, maybe there are some OEMs which are a bit more advanced in, in reducing the number of ECUs. Yeah? So, so you have, you have co coming in software from different manufacturers, from different tier ones, tier twos. So how can you, or 
how can you orchestrate that in a way that the security requirements let's say uh, are are kept on within the the required framework is there is there standards you see coming in is that something is the standards coming in are they advanced enough to comply with the fast uh, uh, piece pace of change yeah, we can take quite some standards that exist and leverage them. And for that, we may need some legislation help and regional support uh, to, to, to accelerate this. As I said, there are areas in the automotive uh, use cases where standards or technology does not exist yet, where we have to, we have to take all together. Standardization is, um, is not as developed as in a high tech or the consumer electronics world, uh, however, uh, there has been have been quite some efforts and successes in uh, uh, in in the last years. Um, I, I can give you an example: AutoSAR. This is the uh, automotive open system architecture. So there is a work group for vehicle to cloud communication, and there is effort and technology that is being uh, developed there. And just recently, AutoSAR announced a framework, ISR, Intrusion Detection System. So this is a reference where now the next generation of the standard uh, suppliers and uh, OEMs need to comply with that. So there's all good things in the right direction. If we look at as, as uh, from a, how we do business, that, that's the technology. If we look how we do business, uh, then uh, we believe uh, industry alliances would make a lot of sense so that we share vulnerabilities. What each of us in the industry detects and we share this commonly and make sure that these things are uh, understood and um, effectively uh, prohibited or applied in the next generation of the, of the, uh, of the uh, technology. And then, um, of course, um, if you look at the standardizations that have happened in the last three years, UNR 155, GBT, uh, ISO 214, 434, uh, etc., they're mostly active in the European market. We are not yet seeing the same level of interest from other regions in, in, in the world, and this will probably um, change with the, with the time. Yeah, of course, every region will may stay uh, unique and different than the regulation within the countries and the region may may uh, look into ways how to protect the industry and most importantly the users so that we make sure that um, the way how we're doing business um, is not uh, putting anything on risk yeah, if i can cyber security or antivirus protection in our on our laptops uh, we don't know yet if, whether users and, and consumers will be willing to continuously allow for their vehicles to be updated on the software. Do you want your car to be continuously updated on the software? We don't know yet from behaviors. There's a mindset change, a culture change, how people respond to these things. And there are also cultural differences across the world. That's, that's very interesting what you say uh, from this perspective. Now you say there is different, is it, different from EU, US or Asia Pacific, is it a mindset question or is it, uh, has the car a different uh, value or, or is, it, is it part of a different system? So, so where do you see coming in these different uh, expectations on, on safety and security in these different regions? Well, well uh, the understanding for importance of the software, software-defined vehicles, the um, opportunity in the market, um, the, the business demand, and the, I think this is shared across the industry. There, I'm, I'm not seeing a, a difference between the various regions or OEMs. Uh, if you look at um, cultural changes or how quickly regions respond to change, there are differences. For example, if you look Asia Pacific, uh, China or India, how quickly these regions embrace digital, digitalization in terms of you you can uh, uh, you can pay with application for a few cents to thousands of dollars just with with a click look at how common that is in asia pacific versus how common that is in the us and now europe i mean there there are different uh, different concerns if you look at the 
a recent legislation change in India saying for the emission, they go from a system four to system six, just over jumping uh, like uh, evolutionary step. If you decide there is enough evidence, then you can accelerate it. And there is more willingness for change in a particular region versus another that goes with a more, more thorough thought <laughs> and a low, etc. So sp speed, mindset, how quickly people respond to risks, to technology, digitalization in the new generation is different. The use cases, the sense for urgency, the value, the potential in the market is the same. Okay. okay. Now, as you say that, right, is there a risk of Europe falling behind the curve, uh, having this more prudent or, or careful mindset and, and APEC may be becoming the new leader in, in development on, on the car industry. How do you see that? Um, I, I think that all the regions have their strengths and, and challenges, so to say. Uh, I think Asia Pacific exp more experimental. Yeah, and embracing and wanting to 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 um, like uh, cycle after cycle and, and run fast. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe, on the other side, if you see it uh, in uh, in the um, regulations and uh, the demands that are out there, just during the pandemic, all all these regulations that were released and forcing OEM to comply with the old standards. It's very strong on the industry that the next generation of cars and vehicles must comply with these vulnerability standards. You must offer this service to the market. It's not a matter of choice. And then the standardization that you want to comply with the standard. It's a different way of responding to the market demand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Now, coming to the last question or the last point, right? So, so now you being Electrobit, right, uh, leading this organization, Maria, what is your, what is your, what is your statement for 2025? Uh, is, is it more secure to drive a car, even though if there is more software in the car or less secure than today? Well, uh, first, the, uh, the method that will have more software, more automation in the car enables new functionality, new functions, new businesses, yeah? So there is a richness experience and user experience in the car and, and more use cases to be covered from the vehicle to the environment and to the ecosystem. Of course, with all the years, we'll continue to evolve and, and protect the vehicle, protect the users and make it safer and more secure. So definitely by 2025, the software and the vehicles that are using this software will be even more protected and more secure than there today. I am absolutely sure in, into this. And if you look at, at our work and our portfolio and expanding this, this is the best proof that companies invest uh, in, in, that, um, in that technology, making sure that it's, it's safe and secure by design, not after the fact. It's in the development process. And we also release products and offering for the OEMs to help them design those systems. Okay. Okay, maybe one last, very last question then. <laughs> when, well, while on the on the cybersecurity in the companies, right? If you look at the let's say the, the systems companies use, um, there has been quite a bit of resistance, right, to really invest in cybersecurity because they say, well, there is a risk, yes, but there is a high cost and there is little upside to these costs. Now, how is your assessment on, on the car industry? Is that a similar pattern or do you see a high, let's say, uh, empathy or a high uh, uh, will to, to spend money on the, on the cybersecurity side? So what is your... This is certainly uh, everything that we're talking about costs money, resources, very skilled personnel, because you need the high end software designers and security, uh, security analysts and time and people and process, uh, restructuring process, re-architecture to make sure we design the system from day one to be uh, secure and, and, and safe. Uh, certainly, uh, there is an investment associated with that, but I'm 100% sure that if we do not do this right away from the beginning, 
doing this after the fact is times more expensive, times more expensive. And with all the expectation that the industry, the user, the society has on the modern uh, auto industry and connected ecosystem, we're talking about connected everything where a car is just another edge in this uh, in this thing, in a smart, smart home and everything. Um, with all the things that we need to comply with, with all these regulations that are out there, we have to do it anyways. So doing it from day one is the most effective and cost efficient way of doing that. Okay, thank, I think that's a good sentence to, to, to end our conversation. Maria, thank you very much for being here today with us and have a wonderful week. Eric, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much and have a great week as well. Thank you. Bye -bye. Wow, what an engrossing discussion that was. And Eric, I completely understand why you kept asking for one last question, one last question again and again. But the topic is as such, right? Thanks, Eric, once again for moderating the session. And thank you, Maria, for speaking about the challenges, complexities uh, that V2X, that is vehicle to everything, is being accompanied with. Thank you once again.